What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is rapper, producer, model, skateboarder, and graphic designer, Navy Blue. We spoke about Sister Act 2, the Queen Latifah movie Beauty Shop, growing up on VHS tapes, being a goofball, Ghost of Tsushima, what makes a conscious rapper, how Ka, Earl Sweatshirt, and Alchemist have inspired his artistry, the difference between producing for yourself and producing for others, the creative process behind his last two albums, Song of Sage, Post Panic, and Navy's Reprise, and more crazy stories and anecdotes than I can remember. <laughs> Come fuck with us. What's cracking? Welcome back to Real Notes. I think this is a... Uh... Now, yeah, now everything is really out of whack because we're doing this one early, early. My name is Dylan Cinema Sai. Um, I got a lot of names, two of them. I do a lot of shit, but we're here right now. Uh, we're here right now with uh, we're here right now with somebody like very, 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 very special. Um, I'm still kind of blown that this is even happening because he's very selective about who he talks to. So it's kind of an honor to be here. You know, we got this guy's a rapper. He's a producer. He's an artist. He's a model. He's a skateboarder. He's uh, he's drinking some matcha right now, and his edges are kind of laid. Both of our edges are laid, if we're being honest. Like every everybody's looking fresh and shit. Like <laughs> it's, 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 this is this is this is a real this is like red carpet shit. We got navy blue Sage Elsesser in the house. Yo, like for like in all honesty, like thank you so much for even taking the time. I know you're busy as shit. Like thank you for coming on, man. My G. It's a pleasure. Yeah, nah, this is, yeah, this, yeah, this is really exciting because you've really been moving for like, you've been moving for the last couple of years, like the last like year and a half in particular. So like, you know, like this is, this is dope. This is super duper duper dope. Um, so yeah, we're just, you know, just here to talk about rap and movies and all that fun shit and make it cool. So uh, I want to ask you the first thing I ask everybody who comes on my shit, which is uh. What's the last movie or TV show you watched that you have a strong opinion about? Um, well, I first the last movie I watched was Sister Act Two, um, <laughs> because I just I, I love the Oh Happy Day scene. Um, I've been That's watching. Uh, yes, of course. Um. What a, I mean, shit. <sighs> I'm just thinking about what I've been watching. I watched Summer of Soul. That's incredible documentary that Questlove did. Damn, I still haven't um, seen it. I've been so busy. <laughs> bro, it's incredible to think that that was just like, that we had something like that happen during yeah. that time. You know, like, and the vast spectrum of artists that were there. You know what I mean? It's, it was incredible. Um, but I've been watching uh, Godfather of Harlem. <laughs> How's <funny>. that? <laughs> it's funny, bro. But like, I I think it's good. But I think, uh, yeah, I have a strong opinion on it because it's like, you know, I'm still watching it, you know, every time that new episode comes out. I mean, I loved American Gangster, so I was like interested in right. uh, And I haven't done that much research on Bumpy Johnson. So I was like, you know. I'm sure a lot of this material is fabricated, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, it's not great, but I think that TV or like a series, TV series, even though, yeah, it's not meant to be like great, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you need a little bit of like corniness or I'm into it. Um, the last show I watched last night, I've been watching the new season of Day. Okay. And, uh, my man's is in it. Right. Yeah, that shit is is different. <laughs> it's like it's crazy, bro. Little Dicky is 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 out of his mind, but I appreciate it. I see I see what he's doing and I think that there's a common theme like in you know like that age group of of people doing shows like that. Like there was like Rami, you know, where there's a show with a strong thesis, but it's funny and um, embracing of like sexuality and, you know. Uh, but yeah, Dave, I'm on episode, I just watched episode three 
and that episode was nuts. <laughs> it's just like the the white people antics and in, in it is just like incredible. And I I like that he shines a light on that. Like he embraces his his whiteness and how ridiculous it can appear to you know other people. All right. Um, what else? I mean, that's the last shit I watched. Yeah, that and uh, right. Sister Act too. <laughs> I uh. So I haven't watched any of Dave yet because I'm like, I haven't really ever been fucking with Lil Dicky like that. He kind of pisses me off, but I've been hearing really good things about the show. And I do love everything going on with Gata. I know that Gata plays a really big part in the show. And like, I know in the first season, he's like- Is that his name? I thought it was Gata. Gata, my fault. See, I, I don't watch the show. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, oh, damn, my fault. Damn, I'm sorry, bro. But um, But yeah, so like, so, so, so from what I understand, everything going on with his story is really crazy. And uh, like one day I'm a give in and just try it. But like just on Prince, yeah. uh, just on GP, I haven't I haven't done it yet. I know a lot of people fuck with it. And I know I've, I, I, like, I've heard a lot of good shit. I just I just can't bring myself to do it yet. I'm, I'm, I'm inching my way. Yeah, I, mean, it. I, mean, <laughs> I just got hip to it. I got hit right. to it because my, my friend is in it. So I was like, you know, I'm going right. to support him and watch it. And I was like, the first season, I was like, yo, this is, this is not, this is, this is pretty good, you know? Okay. Uh, but yeah, the new season is like, it's off to a, to a start, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I'm just, you know, I've been learning to, to shed some judgment and just accept things for what they are. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and the, the show is succeeding in doing what it was intended to do, which is make the viewer uncomfortable. Right. You know I mean? yeah. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I like it. I'm not mad at it. I feel that. Yeah. And, you know, like, I respect that because I love stuff that makes people uncomfortable. Like, it's, I think, um, like some of my favorite movies make me extremely uncomfortable. Some of my favorite TV makes me extremely uncomfortable. So to hear that it does that in a way that's like actually kind of like, um, what's the word I want to use? Just like not intelligent. Cause I feel like that's a, I feel like that's kind of like a loaded word, but like, it just like, like it just sounds like it's cool. You know, like it, so it sounds like it's something that I mean, wouldn't make me mad watching. Intelligent, it, so. intelligent works. Okay. Intelligent works because there's, um, you know, Akai said, uh, you know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. there's just, there's little things, there's super loaded moments in the show, Dave, where what's, uh, what the sentiment that's present is not explicitly s said, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I can't f really think of an example, uh, Okay, well, for example, yeah, I have one. Like, there's a moment where he's driving in the car with his homegirl, who is Asian, and they almost hit this biker, and the biker's like, learn how to drive, bitch. And she hops out, like, in a rage and just runs up on him, and she gets up to him, and she's like, fuck you, you know? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, fuck you, too. And she walks back and gets back in the car and just says, like something along the lines of like, I'm not a bad driver, you know, but never was it stated like she's a bad driver because she's Asian. Right. You know, um, I actually went to dinner the other day with um, a friend and his girl. And uh, <laughs> she was like, I can't help but notice like last time I was here when they brought the bread, we got like the, the ends of the bread. Oh shit! And there, and, she, and she was like, "Is it racism? Like, you know what I mean? Like, are they giving us the ends of the bread? Like, you know?" And and my man was like, "Oh, like I think that's a bit of a stretch, you know? They're both Asian, right?" And I'm like, "Yo, but what we have to understand is, like, the place that we operate from is very like defensive. You know, we like maneuver through the world, like dealing with this shit daily." So white people, I think, need to go out of their way at times to make us feel more comfortable. And that, like, yeah, getting the, the butt ends of the bread might be a little triggering if you're like, yo, like, why, why are we getting? It's a stretch, but you get what I mean? I, I, I 
identified with it, you know? Right. Uh, I was like, you know what? Like, that's not a, that's not a, that's not too crazy to think. Like, you know, especially if you're looking around and everybody else does nice bread, you're like, yo, like, even, even if it wasn't the server's intention. Yeah. You know, like it's you're present. You're still like, yo, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, nah, like, nah, you're absolutely right. And like, and, 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 and you talking about that, uh, you talking about both that and the scene from Dave in particular, I was thinking about, uh, there's a scene in it, there's a scene in uh, Donald Glover's Atlanta that kind of gives me the same vibe. It's, um, it's the episode where Al's playing the charity basketball game with the black Justin Bieber. And, uh, at the end, um, the white news lady he's trying to get with, like, he's trying to like get the interview and she just looks him in the face and is like, like you're like the asshole rapper and we like expect you to play your role and like bieber is not that like he's like she was just talking about how like i guess like people i guess like white people specifically kind of like section off these different types different types of black people in media as like this is like the good guy that we want to win and everyone's gonna be like cool with him no matter what he does and then there's the asshole and like you're the asshole and play your part and like, mm -hmm. and like, I think, I think that kind of plays into what you were saying about like, well, well, I mean, like it's more explicit than the thing that happened on Dave, but I feel like that kind of speaks to the same uh, issue, just in the sense that like people have like expectations for what, like people just have certain expectations for like what other people might think of them or, or at least are like rocked by other people's expectations of them. Like whether that's, whether that's being an asshole rapper or if that's being a quote unquote bad Asian driver or getting fucking the getting the ends of bread at a restaurant when everybody else doesn't like it's just, you know, like as people of color, but like as particularly black people, like th those are those are things we constantly have to think about. So I feel you like. <laughs> right. Right. You know, uh, I was thinking about this stupid video that I saw on Instagram, like so randomly in a weird zone of Instagram on the popular page. It's like <laughs> short, short film, <laughs> literally like 15 minutes of my time. It's this dude. He like goes to buy a, a Rolls Royce. You know, he's like, I'm interested in buying this car. Da da da. And um, the the dealer the car, at the car dealership is like, uh, "Oh, sir, like you can't afford this car." You know what I mean? Mm. And um, Another guy comes up and he looks like he's, you know, he's got all of the uh, the outside stuff, you know, the the suit and the this that, and the, so he's looking to buy the car and he doesn't have the funds because he's like, oh yeah, he takes him into his office and he's like, yeah, I don't, you know, dude is in debt or something, you know. Flash forward, it's just about like, and then the older black man that was trying to buy the car ends up getting it because he's like some kind of multi-millionaire and he's like you know hey never judge a book by its cover you know or whatever so i know that was stupid to even mention um but it's true you know what i mean like even you know i'm sure you've gotten it like oh you're black but you you sound white you know what i mean what does it mean to to, to sound white you know what i mean circumstances are just different you know what i mean um I was just talking to an elder about that, you know, like, and I was actually um, talking to him and I was talking to Ka about being a quote unquote conscious rapper. You know what I mean? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. You know, I'm beginning to embrace it because it's not like I'm a conscious rapper. Like I'm, you know, common hat, you know, with the, the whole the whole nine you feel me yeah. but i that show that i did the other day i definitely had on this like knit crochet common <laughs> yeah. so it's funny that i'm <laughs> actually playing that part but um kyle was telling me he's like you're a conscious rapper because you're conscious you're conscious okay good yeah you're conscious of what you're saying you know i'm not doing the whole like you know, um, I'm not speaking about things in, in a form of code where I'm like looking down on the listener, you know, 
I try to be on the same plateau as the listener so they can identify with me, you know? And that's the same reason that uh, people identify with Prodigy. Like, I guess people wouldn't say that Prodigy is like a conscious rapper, right? Quote, unquote. It's simply because people can identify with Prodigy. You know what I mean? He's conscious of what he's saying. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm learning to embrace that, like I said before, like in shedding a form of judgment and just be, and taking it for what it is you know um i think i'm conscious and aware coming out into the universe and um that matters you know what i mean like you get what you what you give in a sense you know mm -hmm. and uh, i want to i want to like i take pride in knowing that what i put out into the world musically or whatever you know in everything that i try everything i try to do it in everything that i do but particularly the, the music with allowing myself to be vulnerable and this, that, and the third, like, it's just, I want people to, to be able to, to, to identify, you know, be like, okay, you know, um, I think it's a newer joint that I did. Um, I said uh, something along the lines of like seeing, seeing for who are blind, speaking for those who can't you know like that sometimes you know your listener might not even have the words to express what they're going through they kind of just have this overwhelming feeling that's inexplicable in a sense so it's cool to be able to put give words or you know speak words that might summarize how somebody's feeling they're like yo i never thought that somebody could, you know, because we actually think that we're quite unique as human beings. Like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm super special. You know what I mean? And um, I have a lot of elders that have told me that this past year, like, you know, you are unique as a human being. We're all unique. But at the same time, you're not that special. There's a lot of people that go through what we go, same shit we go through, some, if not worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try to find gratitude in that. Like, you know, I'm, life isn't that bad you know no nah, yeah it, it it could always 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 be worse you know exactly you know like, sometimes that, that used to frustrate me like things could be worse and like well my this shit sucks my life sucks right now but yeah. things could always be worse you know what i mean like even when i was down bad i still had the resources you know i still had enough funds to be able to get a therapist and get a psychiatrist and stuff like that. Right. You know, I have to take a, take a moment and express my gratitude for that. Cause there's people that don't have those resources, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't nah. know how the fuck I got to, to where I, what I was just speaking on, but <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Uh, no, nah, that's tight. You know, like it, you, 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 you really said a mouthful and I definitely want to touch on all of that. Cause this is, yeah, like that's all like, but for now, I'm going to say that like perspective really like perspective can just change. It can change everything, you know, just like that whole, um, you know, like it could be worse. Like, like, you know, like, I, like, obviously, like we need to acknowledge when we're doing bad and we need to acknowledge when like things are bad, because even if they could be worse, they're still bad, you know. So um, and on top of that, like being conscious of that is like, 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 I love what you and Kyle were talking about with the whole like conscious rapper thing. Cause like, cause like, cause like really like everyone's conscious, you know, I can't think of a single rapper who's not conscious in that way. You know, like most everyone is conscious of what they're saying, even if what they're saying isn't like, you know, quote unquote thoughtful in the way that like, we kind of like categorize that. So I really appreciate, I really appreciate people who are kind of put in that position, like, you know, like Kai and yourself saying stuff like that, because like that perspective, like we were just talking about is super important. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, you know, like you don't got to be talking about, you don't got to be talking about freeing your mind to be conscious, you know, right? like right. money bag. Yo is conscious. Like Meg is Meg is conscious. Like, Which you know, that, that that's just, yeah, I just love that distinction. That shit is fire to me. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you feel that, you know? Yeah. 
because there's like that negative connotation that comes with though you're a conscious rapper you know i don't like one thing i don't like is like lo-fi <laughs> under, like underground da, da, da. yeah i get it though i get it yeah I, yeah 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 i like, feel like all we... of us is like anybody who knows mike is from slums you know what i mean right you're like you know you've done music for, with mike you you're from slums collective yeah yo i see that shit all the time bro where did did that come from yeah i'm just saying that i was telling i was uh i was telling somebody down the block i was like yeah i'm about to do this little like podcast thing with uh with the homie and um yeah like i simply because like you know I don't, I'm not really too hip on like the write-ups, you know what I mean? Like you kind of, you wrote, I guess one that I was like, oh, this is great, you know? Thank uh, you. So, first of all, I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I even find that like there's other write-ups that people do on these like super low key sites that are great. That I like appreciate that they take the time to really like, you know, dive in and try to dissect it. Um, and it's amazing because there's a bunch of different, it's not, not, not that I compare them, but I'm like, wow, like, you know, Dylan sees this album differently than somebody else sees it. You know what I mean? Right. And that's the beauty of it. Like, I might say something meaning one thing, but to the listener, it means something entirely different. You know what I mean? Um, I had a homie, let me find this text. Let me find this text. Who is it from? Nah, yeah, while you're looking, like, that's, like, oh, no, you found it? Yes. What happened? Like, on my new album, I have a song called My Whole Life. Yeah, I was just listening to that. And um, I said, like, some, some, I'm a king. I'm a king, not a prince, probably while my youth hazy. And uh, <laughs> he wrote to me, that's the craziest thing I've heard this year. Double entendre jumped over the moon. I have to explain why this is crazy wait up you said hazy like you can't remember even being a prince because you was looking past your adolescence onto being a man right but also it could be a a collegiate reference like a fraternity hazing (laughs) you were hazed to become a king because you had to face trials and tribulations to get the crown either way the bar hit you're ridiculous good work g But I'm like, I was, I would have, bro, I would never make like a frat reference, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I meant it as simple as can be, like, yeah. Right. The first thing he said, you know, which was on the, on the surface, you know. Uh, That's incredible. Cause I never would have come to that either. Like, I heard that and I'm like, 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 like I never, my brain never would have went there, you know? Right. And it, it takes one listener to, listener to be like, you mean like hazing in a fraternity? I've never even heard that term before. Oh, word? No, nah, that no, nah, that's no, nah, that's like a thing they do. They they Easy. they like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a pledge week thing where they like run them through the, the like they run them through like the lead um the the gauntlet when they're like about to get into a into a frat. That's called hazing. Okay, so I'm like cool. Like you know, if if that's how you hear it, then that's you know the power of word. Right. And then and then, you know, like somebody else could just hear it. Like they could just hear the Prince part and be like, oh, like the Fresh Prince, you know, like more like really like surface. Le- like not that like I doubt anyone thinks that, but there's always a chance that somebody might just hear that and be like, like the Fresh Prince, you know, like, oh, you never yeah. know. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Or maybe he doesn't own his masters because <laughs> he's talking about Prince. You know what I mean? He's not he's not <laughs> Prince, so he doesn't own his masters. <laughs> Yeah, oh, like man. right, like that's like that's the you know, like like you were trying to say that's the beauty of art, you know. Like er- everyone takes it differently, even if you might be like, that's not what I meant by that at all. But like, right, you know, like over the course of the last like however long it's been, we touched on so many things that I really want to like dig into more. But um, I want to go back to you talking about Sister Act because. That seems that seems like it's a movie that really kind of connected with you when you were younger. I assume because it seemed like you already have some sort of relationship with it. Like, um, so 
yeah, talk to talk to me about Sister Act Two and why you love Sister Act Two so much. Because I'm really I'm curious about that, especially that scene. Because that scene is like a moment. Well, it it stemmed from watching uh, Summer of Soul mm. because Edwin Hawkins, like the, the choir, did a were singing. I think it was Edwin Hawkins. I'm not quite sure. I want to say it was Edwin Hawkins. Um, yeah, so the Edwin Hawkins singers, they did Oh Happy Day. And I was like, wow, now I have to watch Sister Act. Um, but you know what? This just came to my, just, just like jumped into my to my head. Like, I guess what I love so much about that scene in particular is the fact that, uh, I forget his name, but he's like the uh, the conscious brother who is, You do you remember the movie? I do, yeah. I just don't remember his name. A part, I'm, yeah, I'm a really part stuck. Where they're like in the classroom, and there's that like Italian kid who's a rapper, and uh, he's like, "Yo, like, he's like, why can't you just like we always leeching on our culture? Why can't we have anything?" Da da da. So he has this all this confidence in himself when he speaks, and then that part when he's on stage performing, and um. It's just a heartwarming scene, bro, because they're like getting into it and they're all nervous. And then uh, what happens? What happens in that scene? Yeah, he comes out. He's like, oh, happy day. And, you know, and she's like, you got to do better than that. You know? Um, yeah, Whoopi was killed that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and she does a thing where she's like, you know, she makes them run through the scale in the middle of it. She's like, All right, everybody follow me. He's like, da, 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 da. and they, whatever. And then he taps right in. Like he gets that, that boost of confidence. So I identify with that, me personally, because like I see myself as a confident person, but it was hard for me to like step into being navy blue because forever I was like doing it just like an anonymous SoundCloud account. Right. You know? And Tebe was just telling me it's about time you just stepped into it and owned it. And then, you know, when the mint came out, the single artwork was me and Tebe together. Right. So that was like kind of connecting the face to the, 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 the music. But yeah, I just love how he, he's this confident young brother who ends up like being nervous, you know what I mean? And then he like, you know, gets jiggy, you know, and then he hits that, that, that when he starts walking into the crowd and he hits that, that infamous note, I don't, I can't, I cannot hit it. He's like, when Jesus, wow. Like, oh, you go. <laughs> I love that shit. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, I guess that I just watched it. There's a couple of films that I watch just to go back and revisit like one particular moment. Oh, definitely. Gen it generally has to do with the music. Like, uh, I've been watching, I watched Beauty Shop recently. Wow. One of, my, one of my favorite movies growing up. Underrated, son. Great choice. There's a there's a point in the movie when um, a white woman, I forget what her name is, in the film, but she's telling, uh, is it Queen Latifah's niece, is it? Or... Like really, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's her niece. I could be wrong, but I think it's her niece. Yeah, the one who like goes outside and sees Birdman, and then like ends up fighting with with Ghost from Power. Yeah, I think that was her niece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, was so, <laughs> that part, she uh, yeah, the white girl is like, why why don't none of the girls like me? And she's like, she's like, you just you need to play the part. You need to again step into it and own it. Then she gets her hair did up. And uh, Queen Latifah comes in the shop. She sees it like, she's like, oh, my God. The next scene. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my days. Whoa. Hey, she's just doing guard dog shit right now, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's out here, son. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, there's a song. Um, I think it's, it's called I'm Caught Up. And it's by Yum, Yummy Bingham. Mm-hmm. And bro, I've been trying to find this song 
for so long. For so long. I even went as far to like, I recorded it off the TV and I just have the the little bit that's in the movie looped up so I can listen to it. Like, damn. Because it's so hard. I know you probably remember it. Uh, it's like, oh, how's it going? I'm so caught up. It's all because it's me. Bro, it's so hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I'm sorry it had to be you. But, bro, that shit is so hard. Um, so I went on Instagram, found Yummy Bingham's page, DM'd her, like, yo. I've been on, like, forums online trying to find a song. There's people, there's ex- people in my exact position, like, where the fuck can I find this song? At? <laughs> what did you say? Uh, I was just like, I've been in love with this song since I was a kid. And when I first seen Beauty Shop, how can I find a song? She responded. She was like, sorry, love. Like, it's not out. Oh, no. Not even on the soundtrack? Bro. Damn. I looked. I looked for the soundtrack. Like, I, it, I can't find it. I cannot find it. Um, anywho, we because we, we were talking about uh sister act, you know. This, yeah, this that's another one from my childhood, you know what I mean? Sister Act 2. Right. Um, but yeah, I love that film and I love that scene. Everybody loves that scene. You can, yeah, you know. And not love that scene. Yeah, you really can't front on it. Like those, you know, like you really can't like it's just such like a it's it, it's just like pure joy, bro. Like there's really nothing more that you can like. It's really hard to hate on something so happy, you know, like it's 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 tough like in that context. And right. I could and you're like, I could tell that really means a lot to you and that like both of those two things really mean a lot to you. So like cons- so, so like considering that they happened to you like when you were younger and like a kid, like let's go a little further back. Like, do you rem- do you remember your first th- the first experience you had watching a movie like at a theater, like at your cousin house? like wherever Mm. you know what this is a funny thing because i was born in 97 bro Mm -hmm. like that's not far off from from the year 2000 you feel me nah i do know that children from 2000 and up like like bro i grew up on vhs tapes you know what i mean like I remember physically holding those tapes and like having relationships with these tapes and popping it in the thing, the TV that had the VHS in it. Yeah, built it. Like, yeah, nah. Um, but I used to watch like my pops had found all these old like Batman films because I was obsessed with Batman. Yeah. Um, I was obsessed with Batman, bro. My pops was like, "Yo, like, I know you love Batman." But you know, but he's like kind of a, a fictional character. He just kept it a buck with me. And he, you know, I think it was also like being that he was like this white kind of superhero. My pops was like, yo, I'll show you a like a real life superhero. Mm. And he introduced me to Bruce Lee. Mm. I remember seeing all of the, the low key cuts and then watching Enter the Dragon. I was like, oh my God. You know what I mean? Like, I think that was the first time that I was just like engulfed by a film. You know, yeah. every little thing, like the way that one was filmed, it was just like incredible. Um, but yeah, it's funny because I actually say say something about that specific time, and I actually have this interview coming out with um with New Reader. Ooh. Um, it's pretty cool, and I'm like speaking about that about um how people label me as a or label my stuff as a stream of conscious it's like a stream of conscience that yeah it's a thing people say i've said it too not about you but like yeah people say that which i agree but the beautiful thing about stream of conscience is that you can address things from all facets of your life you know what i mean you like constantly swaying between the 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 present the future and the past, like in one thought, you know, but on uh, not a lot to fear. I say Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne, Bruce Lee. I couldn't leave without the capes, without the cape that my pops made. Mm. Pops made graves. Uh, 
but just some just some something that's like so little as that you know yeah like there's a whole story behind that and like that's and you know like i feel i and like i feel like that's one of the great things about your music like there's just so, like there's so many little vignettes throughout there like even like there, like there's another bit I'm, I'm i'm not to get too far off track but there's another bit on uh navy's reprise i forget which song it is but you mentioned you mentioned like wanting to you mentioned wanting to buy uh, i think it was either your little brother or your little nephew some shoes so you could watch him grow out of them and mm-hmm. like that moment really stuck with me because it's mm-hmm. it, it, it like you mention it and then it's just like gone like two bars later it's just like there and then gone and i right. love that little like snapshot you know and like the bruce lee Bruce Wayne snapshot is another one, but that's all my whole we, life. Right. That's all my whole life. Uh buy my nephew sneakers just to watch him grow out of them as soon as he get in them. Exactly. Learn to, learn to pick my battles in the long run we winning. Um yeah, those little precious moments that are just gone, just like, you know. Um even in Little Dicky's show, bro, like where I'm at right now, he's having a hard time writing music. Like he has he's working on an album and he can't like formulate any ideas i try to honor the present moment like if i like last night i made a beat and i just woke to it in that same sitting recorded that's how generally how i like to capture the moment opposed to you know sometimes i'll you know take my time with something you know but moments like that those are usually the best lately i've been rapping a lot too like my songs are generally short the past couple songs i made have been like three minutes and 30 seconds to like 340, you know, shit. I'm rapping a lot. Um, that's something that I'm actually going to try to tone down a little bit. And I noticed from performing live, it's a lot of, you know, Al always tells me, you know, you should learn to just do a 16, break it up, even pause for a second, come back. Cause right. I usually just go until my thought is completed, you know? So that might be 40 plus bars, you know, who right. Knows? Um, but yeah, we were talking about the movies, um, VHS. Yeah. That's where, that's where I come from. So like even the, the, the experience of like going to like a blockbuster, you know, renting the film and falling in love with it, falling in love with it and not being able to return it, telling my mom, like, I think we're going to have to take this one on the chin. Like I'm not yeah. giving it back. You yeah, you gotta pay that six dollars for the for the for the return I, fee. Yeah. I'm not look, this is mine. That's what I did with NBA Street volume two when I got it from mm. there. And I was like, I'm not giving this back. What right. I'm not giving this back. Are you kidding me? I recently just bought, like maybe a couple months ago, I bought a PlayStation 2, a little one. Oh, been, okay. Like, you know, that tiny little one. And I've been playing like, bro, like. FIFA 06, FIFA Street, FIFA Street 2, <laughs> uh, Fight from New York. Oh, I bought the N1 game. Bro, I have street hoops. Like, yo, just like playing all the nostalgic games. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even really like a big video game dude. I do like video games, though. I like FIFA and like 2K and uh, I've been. I played that Ghost of Tsushima game for a minute. The expansion just came out today. I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, director's here. cut. Let's yeah. go. It literally dropped today. I'm oh so ready. God. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I, so I, ready. Play, I usually play it with, uh, well, I'll do the, the the story shit, but um, knowledge got me on my, like, on the online shit where you can, like, link up with the homies. And yeah, Legends. Battles. Yeah. Legends. Me and my homies been doing that shit, too. This shit is amazing. Let's link up on there, bro. Yeah, bro. Come on. My shit is not like I'm not like too advanced. Like every time I get on there with knowledge and his people's like they're all like they got all the accolades and shit. And I'm like, but I'm I'm nice. You know what I mean? But when I play with them, they can't do like the, the crazy battles because I'm like a beginner. So they always yeah. have to do the, the simple shit. That's hilarious. Oh, that's a long time. I'd rather play that shit than like call of duty i think call of duty is racist bro i mean it is you, you, you're not wrong i i also kind of prefer playing ghost of tsushima and stuff like that to call i love call of duty i play it like you know like shout out to shout out to my boy eric soko he and i play all the time but like i definitely love like 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like me, uh, me and my homie Kemba, um, we play Ghost of Tsushima. Me and his homies, we play that game a lot. And like, it shit is just different, man. Like, it's just there's something about Last it that's just question. like, yeah. Did you kill Uncle in the end? Yeah, <laughs> I did. <Killed> <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. Oh I, my. Yo, I thought about what it. Happened? What happens when you kill him? Because I didn't, I didn't kill him. And then I was talking to Mike about it, and I was talking to <laughs> Sifu about it. And Sifu yeah. was like, yeah, bro, like, I, I let him live. And I think Mike said he let him live, too. I let I let him live. What happens when you kill him? So when you kill him, um, you know, you stab him. Or, or no, it's um, uh, he asks you to do it because he's like, you, um, you know, like, it's right before the decision. He's like, kill me now. I need an honorable death, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So you kill him. And he says, you know, like, I think he says, thank you. And then he's just like, you know, like, you're going to be on the run forever, right? Like you, you just like killed me. And I'm like, and I, and I'm like the head of the, um, he's like the head of the Shogunate. So like, so. Okay. He pretty much says the same thing when you don't kill him too. He's like, you know, the ghost, the ghost will never sleep or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the endings are pretty much exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was going to ask you what happens if you let him live. Cause yeah, you go off and then, and then, um, and then, uh, Jin has his little like hut that he has like all the shit in. Yeah. So it's, it's basically the same thing. Yes. Another okay. thing about that shit, because I always ask people about their attire, whatever they put on their on on their on mm. their dude. I stay in the betrayer's hat, bro. I want to remember that. I want to remember that nigga because he was he's your <laughs> man since childhood. Right. Real snake energy, but yeah, I, I stay in the betrayer's hat, bro. <laughs> I'm a, um, I love um, how you I'm, can, uh, collect all the flowers and then like dye your your garments. Yo, there's a trophy. That, um, um, if you have it for PS4, there's a trophy you could get. I got that where, shit for PS5, nigga. Oh, see, all right, all right. <laughs> you, you 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 already got me beat. But like, there's a trophy you could get where um um you ever played the Sly Cooper games back in the day? No. So. So if you don't know, and for anybody listening who doesn't know, long story short, Sly Cooper was like this little like. He, he, he was like a thief, but a raccoon. And mm. uh, the um, the developers who made Ghost of Tsushima also made the Sly Cooper games. So you, you can go through and like get specific weapons and dye clothing a specific color to make yourself look like Sly Cooper. So I did that for it. So, so it's like blue, black, and gray. Five. And yellow. And uh, I got that. And I stay in the, the straw hat like the really big straw hat with like the cracked brim so you can like see that that's that that's my shit uh-huh. I, I like I, I got that and i never got rid of it that's my Bro, whole I shit i think that's the betrayer's hat oh is it okay then now yeah never the mind. Has got a little that. thing right here so yeah 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 but yeah yeah but nothing no nah, no nah, that's it that's it but yeah i like that game a lot <laughs> because we, yeah, were that game is great. About, we were talking about vhs and we were talking about nba street and blockbuster and then then I was talking about video games and how I like them, but I'm not like, you know. But yeah, bro, that's a great game. We should definitely play it sometime. Man, I'm 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 all with it. Let's do it. <laughs> um so what, what was I gonna say? Uh one more thing before we move on. Yeah, I have I have my PS2 from when I was like like I got it when it first came out. So I got it like 20 years ago. And right. I still have it, and I still like I have like my stack of games that I run like once every six months. I know once every year to like remind myself like what I love, just like Ratchet and Clank. Um, I found I found a copy of Fight for New York for like 30 bucks at a retro game store. So I just like I have that and I've been running that and like bro, my shit is I bought bought this shit on eBay for like $150. Oh, okay. Steep. And then bro, I get to the like, I'm like 60% through, and the shit just won't work no more. So I gotta find I gotta find another one. Maybe yeah. I can borrow yours. I mean, we can make that happen at some point. You just gotta be careful because yeah, like there people people are gonna charge out the ass for that game. You're not yeah. gonna find it cheap. Everybody wants it. Yeah. Like there there's a oh. yo like there's a whole there's a whole like there's a whole like community that still plays that game and and and, and there's like a tier list and shit. I think like Sticky Fingers is the best fighter in that game. He's like the S tier. It's crazy to me. Like, I don't know why he is, but apparently, like, Sticky Fingers is the best one. There's, like, the S tier, then there's A, B, C, and, like, I, I forget the rest, but, like, Sticky is the one for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I used to hate fighting uh, 
David Banner. He was pretty rough. Yeah, nah, Banner was pretty rough. I always used to hate fighting that. Like, anyways, let's move on from video game talk. <laughs> so that, that was that was that was fire. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so with the so um you have the so you have these moments with the Bruce Lee movie and Sister Act and I and you know to an extent Beauty Shop like because you were kind of talking about with Enter the Dragon how that kind of like captured you so like is so as you got a little older and you kind of started to understand things a little more and your palette started to expand um was there a point was there a specific movie you watched where you kind of looked at it and were like oh this is art like not just something that's like entertaining but like something that's like it, it could either be like artful like something that just like really moved you or just like made you look at film in a different light Mm. yeah there's a couple films there's this like this oblive song where that god's connected the video for mm-hmm. and i was like i gotta see what what film this is it's called besudo besudo which means like the beetle in portuguese Ooh, yeah it's a it's a great film it's shot really well it's a little funny but like it's shot really well and um, that's cool pretty much it's a this kid who um yeah, this kid who this is also during like slavery when the Portuguese were settled, you know. So right. it's a capoeira film, and these and these guys are um pretty much breaking the legs and severing the hands of people that they catch doing capoeira. And the main character's uh you know, teacher is killed, and then he makes it his like his life's purpose to like avenge him, I guess. And he gets, and he's given these like magic powers from Orishas. Um, he becomes the beetle and they have these amazing shots where the camera is like floating through the air, through the perspective of the beetle. And he lands in his teacher's hand and like, he's in the spirit realm, you know? Yeah. Beautifully shot. Um, so I love that film. Um, I'm a huge Morgan Freeman fan. Can't, you know, um, I used I used to love Shawshank. I still love it, but you know, I haven't. Yeah. Like I've just seen it too many times. Um, yeah, I feel it. Yeah, Shawshank's a classic, honestly. Like, yeah, cool. incredible. Um, I also love Black Dynamite. Yo, my <laughs> maybe my favorite movie ever. I'm so happy you said that, son. I've seen that movie 80 million times. I could quote 80, the whole thing front to back. Bro, you see, look, I'm. You're my guy, bro. That's <laughs> I can't watch that shit. I have to be the annoying nigga that's just quoting the whole fucking film, bro. But <laughs> remember when uh that part when he's like uh <laughs> when they're in the when they're in the fucking uh in the diner and uh just the whole the whole Eminem scene. Yeah, it's like they. Yeah, it's like they melt in your mouth and not in your hands. And He's Mars like, is owns the candy company, and Mars is the Roman god of war. And- he goes, oh, whoa, whoa, and Mars. He goes, and what's more? Turn around, drop the X, Ram, Ram, <laughs> <laughs> and that is the zodiological sign for Aries. Aries. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bit where he's talking about um um they do uh. Um, they, they they find the snake doctor thing and then they do then they do that backwards and drop the S and it spells Topeka snakes, Kansas. Snakes, <laughs> snakes intertwined all around that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a sign that's still used in the medical field to this day. This day. <laughs> Son. And then and, and then they get they get to the anaconda, you know. That that yeah, and then they find bro in, the, in there and they <laughs> and his dick little, they zoom in like 30 <laughs> times. <laughs> Look at him and said, should we kill him? <laughs> Take him yeah. out of his misery, bro. That shit is incredible. Holy yeah. shit. And then, and, then, and then his bullhorn just said, and he goes, these t- this time, these crackers gone too far. Like, yo. <laughs> I, that shit has me crying bullhorn, every time. Son. Yo. Like, what? A, and, like, and, like, the thing I love about Black Dynamite, other than the fact that, like, it's 
like it's an incredible recreation of that whole era of filmmaking because like adrian young even like did the score on a whole bunch of old instruments and shit and like they shot everything on the cameras they got all the costumes from the vintage clothes shops but like black dynamite it's all actors playing actors playing characters like it can't possibly be more meta and like that like it's a really difficult level of acting that I don't think people appreciate. And, you know, people even acknowledge how much, like that's the beginning of the mint, like how much me and Tebe love that fucking film. Yeah. Tommy Davidson is the fucking man. He's the funniest nigga on the planet. So I'm like, he's really had it forever. Yo, and yeah, and yeah, nah, a lot of people don't know that the mint starts with that scene of him in the barber shop time. I'm running thing. Yeah, just like yeah. he's like, I yeah, heard that's right. I mean, he's looking at his nails. He's like, I'm yeah. running things. I love that shit. <laughs> Have you farting through silk? Yeah. Well, so when I first when I first heard the mint, I was like, because like I had heard your music before, but the first time I heard the mint, I was like, Oh, this guy's next level. Like he gets it. Okay. Like, yeah. Like I, like I knew that that was like, yeah, this is it. (laughs) This is, this is that, you know? Right. And I love that song specifically because my, my, I don't even think it's a verse. Like it feels like it's just an extension of Tebe's verse, you know, it's like a nice introduction to his verse, you know? And I was watching his, uh, his set at the Pitchfork Festival. And I love the way he, he performs my verse is so good. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I've um uh, I've seen you both do it together and I've seen him do it separate. And yeah, like the way he does it, the way he does it on his own. Is just, you were at that show? What was it, Urban the, Plot? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Bro, that was that was, that was the first time I had like performed. It was so weird. Well, oh, that, that, that was your first, really? It was cool because like, especially because Tommy Davidson's part going into it's hard to catch it because it does it so yeah but it was nice because everybody knew the words and I didn't even really have to do much right but it was beautiful that was an amazing experience yeah. um I'm just on this topic I'm trying to think of other like I do love black exploitation films um another thing again it's like I think that was also subconsciously an extension of like 30 keys by Ka. Mm, okay. Because, you know, the intro is that bit from Superfly. Yep. You know? And um, that actually reminds me, I have to, I had linked up with Tyler the other day and he was playing me some, some stuff. And uh, he was like, yeah, I got this joint where it's from the perspective of somebody who well, he played me one joint and he's like, this is me hanging out with the, the people that my mom's told me to stay away from. And then this is and then the next song he played me. He's like, this is from the perspective of the of the man who doesn't enjoy that. He, this is the way that he has to orchestrate his life, you know? Mm. So that reminds me, I have to send him 30 keys because I don't want to do it. Got to do it. You know, want to do it. Got to do it. Yeah. That's that's they maybe got, one they, of the they got to use it is the craziest shit to me, you know, and I man. love that song because at the end of it. When Kai's like, man, like that shit hurt. He told me that when he had come out of the booth. Uh, his wife was just waiting there, like with open arms, like, oh, wow. my God, like, like it was one of those, you know, or he just yeah. was like. He man, I love that song so much. I love the video, him in the rain. That song is still like that's one that every time I listen to it, it's like it's brand new. You know, that's a rock marciano beat. Uh-huh. Yep. It is. Yeah, that shit, that, that shit gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. I think that so might have been one of the about it right now. It's giving me like yeah, <laughs> every time, every time I hear that song, it's brand new to me. Damn. Cause like that that might have been one of the earliest car songs I heard. And mm-hmm. like I like yeah, once again, that whole first verse, like we was tripping at the lab bab, then flip it on the ab. <laughs> Every trip I'm like, this one is this the one lab. is the last. Two weeks later, I'm dipping in my stash. Dipping in my like, stash. That's that shit that's is so real. Again. Like, uh, Fill it then. 
if you're doing it to eat, is it still a sin? sin. (laughs) Yeah. Shout out to Kyle, always and forever. Like, he's just, I know, um, you know, you two have worked together quite a bit and you're on the new album. And like the the beat you gave him in the verse you spit was just wild. Like really, you went to outer space, bro. Like just Thank you, bro. Yeah. Real quick, we need to address track two. Okay. Because I told Ka I was at the studio when he recorded that one. Um, also, I've never seen anybody work like Ka. It's really like it's incredible. He goes to the studio with all yeah. the songs ready. His lyrics printed out on paper. Wow. Um, and just record songs. Like he'll do it in like three sessions. The whole album's like. Brr. Um, but yeah, he did track two, which is. I need all that. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh my days, bro. My waves, my braids, my waves, my gold. I told him, I said, I haven't heard one like this that does something to me like since 30 Keys. Damn. That joint right there. Did it to stop starving, bro. Ka is, is, I'm like extremely grateful that I like, you know, have a relationship with him. I met him through Earl. Um, we, because I was staying over um, on Lexington at the time. Right. Um, and he was like, yo, I'm about to go over to the firehouse to meet Ka. I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, you have to come with me. Yeah. Um, I had on like, like Navy sweatpants and these, and like Weegians, some loafers. <laughs> and when I showed up, it was funny. Cause I seen him, he was looking at me. Like he looked at my shoes. He like looked at me and I was like, like, oh my God, he's judging me because I'm wearing loafers and sweatpants. Like, oh, he's probably like, who does this nigga think he is? <laughs> Bro, he goes in his pocket and pulls out some change and finds two of the shiniest pennies and gives them to me. And I'm like, what's this for? You know what I mean? He's like, yo, how you gonna rock, how you gonna rock the loafers? And I had the pennies in them. <laughs> and I was like, wow, because I was thinking about the the bar. That, that directly like meshed together with he says streets ain't safe not even pl- pennies in your loafers Me loafers yep mm-hmm. i was like whoa like bro i was so nervous to meet him he just the most humble down-to-earth dude and he was like, oh do you make music and i was like um a little bit not really <laughs> you do, do the tremble <laughs> so nervous bro and Tebe looked at me like, bro, what? Like, why are you lying? And then a couple, some time had passed and he had posted um, Soul Golden, me and me and Black Noise Project. Right. Like, oh, this is this is incredible. Da, da, da. And then um, Animos had told him, like, yo, you know that Sage, right? And he's like, the kid that I just met the other day at the firehouse? And he, uh, he hit me up on Twitter. He sent me his number. He said, call me right now. And I called him and he was like, yo, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> it's like what's wrong with you i was just like yo like i was just wild nervous like you're you're that you're the man like you know right yeah but i mean it's back to the what i was saying is like i'm so grateful to have built a relationship with him because i say it wholeheartedly like he's my biggest inspiration in this music like in the rap shit like right my biggest inspiration um so that it's been incredible to be able to like build with him and like be able to do two joints with him, you know, kind of like the only feature on his new album. There's another, yeah, Joy is on there. I think Joy is on there. Yep, which He's, like amazing. Like shout out to shout out to the Dungeon family. Like that's crazy that he got Joy on there. Right. Um. It's nuts that he did that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I, I remember even the story like behind that joint. I'm giving you some exclusive content. Um, the story behind um, the joint that we did, we live in, is that that was supposed to go on Song of Sage. Mm. Um, and I had been, I was like, yo, I got this joint I really want you to get on. And Kyle always does this thing where he's like, yo, like you sound great on that. 
you know, but it ain't for me. Or like, I, like I remember playing a beats and he's like, this is cold. I'm like, let me send it to you. He's like, oh, this ain't for me. This ain't for me. But yo, yo, you would sound great on that. <laughs> so, so he was like, yeah, I guess uh, this ain't for me. You know, I was like, I, cause also, cause he was working on uh, Hermit and the Recluse. So he was like, kind of just focused on that. And then uh, I sent it to him a couple months later, maybe a month, like, bro, this is the one I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'll give it a listen. And, you know, and then some time passed. He was like, yo, you're right. Let's do this. Da, da, da. He's like, I'm going to write to it tonight. He's writing to it. Then he, he called me. And he's like, yo, like, is there a bar minimum? Like, you want me to? I was like, bro, write until you finish. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, I bet. A couple minutes passed by, maybe like 30. And he was like, yo, I'm going to have a hard time parting with this verse. And I was like, what you mean? Like, he was like, he's like, yo, like, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it with this one. I was like, hi. Right. He's like, yo, like, you want to use it? Can, can I use it for, for, for my album? I was like, absolutely. What? <laughs> it's almost so, like, like more of an honor than it would be the other way, honestly. Like, <laughs> like, honestly, I was like, yeah. So it was really cool to have that on Martyrs. Like, that joint is crazy. And um, that cover, bro. And what he told me about that cover was like, He's like, even when you lynched us, you looking up at us. Right. Wow. Wow. Nah, I'm saying right like I know. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> you know, like, and it's beautiful because even the image that he used, it's like, we're ascending, bro. We're literally floating. Even, even as grotesque as it is, still looking up at us and looking at us like as the spectacle that we are. You know what I mean? Right. Wow. Like, and that's one, and like, oh, like, there's so many things that I love about Kai and his music, but like, he's just, I, like, like, I'm really, I'm really big on any kind of rap that just, or really any music in general, but rap specifically that like breaks down really complex ideas into very simple, easy to get digestible shit. And like, no one, and I mean, no one, nobody is better at that than Kai. Like, he's just For real. Just like, like, like this man opened a song by saying we was living in the living room. Come on. Like, <laughs> yo. Yo, hold up. What about, what about this one, bro? It's not snitching. If you telling on, telling a, pedophile. on a pedophile son, like, yeah. Come on, man. He's incredible, bro. He's incredible. Um, right. It's funny too because he knows how much I love uh, Honor. That's like one of my favorite joints. Honor killed the samurai. Honor is amazing. Yeah, shout out to that album. And I feel like Martyr, a martyr's reward is kind of like the theme, kind of meshes with 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 martyrs. I think it does. Honor. Just because of this 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 uh, idea of honor, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, like, and um, he's really somebody that helped me navigate this idea of like putting together an album you know like post panic was really like that i had a theme you know what i mean it was really a theme like um you know it's like descendants of cain i like how it's a it fluctuates you know what i mean mm -hmm. honor killed samurai is like you know you know we know what that means you know right we know exactly what that means, but uh, yeah, Martyr's Reward is incredible, bro. Yeah, it's it's just, it's too good. And like, and I feel like Honor is like a theme that goes throughout all his albums too, now that we're talking about it. Like you could even, you could even hone in on like Descendants of Cain. Like even a song like, uh, oh man, um, the fuck is it called? Um, Patron Saints. Like Patron Saints is a song like about Honor. Like even him talking about his father shooting the dude and then throwing him the gun and just and just like Lancelot's at table Lancelot's around tables cutting ace like that's all like it's just it's just all like honor bound type shit and mm -hmm. like sometimes sometimes it'll be in the form of like a samurai sometimes it'll be in the form of like Greek or Roman mythology like Hermit and the Recluse was or uh sometimes it'll just be like biblical or sometimes it's just him but it's always him it's it's he's he's just got it like that man and like I can see the influence 
like on you, you know, like I can see, like, especially as you've gone over the course of the last like five years, like I've seen you kind of like whittling yourself down to that. What was the, you know? what was the first, you said 30 keys was your first joint that you heard from Kai? From Kai. Yeah. Something like that. Either that or, um, uh, cold facts from grief pedigree, which is my favorite Kai oh. album. Fight the pick. one. I've, you know, bro, that cover is insane. Love it. I love the little Superman logo in the corner. I don't know why, but that always gets my eye. That always gets my eye. Right. Right. Um, that shit, man. Uh, mine was uh, every day, every week, every month. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So that was, I'm trying to remember what, what, what project was that on? Was, was that on Grief Pedigree 2 or not? Or was that earlier? I believe it was earlier. So that was like, what, like Ironworks? ish or even earlier than that i can't remember damn i know i'm like drawing a blank yeah me too yeah. and yeah like uh, um, and like i've only i only got to hear martyr's reward all the way through once because i've been busy but like i can't wait to spend more time with it just because like that's what i do with every kai album like i spent like a month with descendants of Cain, and like mm -hmm. i and um i wrote about it i wrote a whole piece about um uh how ka kind of like navigates greek uh grief through mythology because i loved how he did that with um descendants of cain and um um orpheus and the sirens like just really beautiful Yo, how he translates those stories every is is on grief pedigree it is on grief pedigree okay yeah now i not see now this weekend i gotta go run the whole discography back all right yeah <laughs> damn yeah he's bro. he's just something um you know, so we, we you, know, you know, you and I can sit here and talk about Kyle all day. He's he's incredible. But um, for you, since, since since we already spent a good chunk of time talking about like your history with movies, like walk walk me through when you first fell in love with music, because like it doesn't have to be rap. It could be just music in general, because I know um, I know your father played some instruments. I don't remember which ones exactly, but I know he played. So like when like when did music really first start to like hit you like that? Man. I mean, yes, yeah, since I could remember, I mean, probably like as a child, I probably, I mean, probably in the womb, you know what I mean? Like I, pro yeah. I heard drums and my mother singing or I felt definitely fell into a world of music, like all the music that I grew up listening to, um, you know, and my pops actually said, said to me recently, like I was never the, the kid I was never a uh, chicken nuggets and French fries kid. Mm. That's my nephew is one of those kids. You know, there's a lot of kids in in modern day that are like that. You know, I was I was one of those kids too. I can't even front. You know, like I was, I was down for whatever. I was never like ill. What is that? I was always down to try it. You know, and just like yeah, the music and the food, like worldly all types of different cultures, you know. Um, I remember eating a samosa as a, as a baby and being like, whoa, you know, I had a little spice to it. And I love, I love spicy food. Um, Same. And I remember just being like, wow, this is incredible, you know. Uh, maybe some, like, other kids at that age would have been like, yuck. But that was just a, because I'm a product of my parents, you know what I mean? So... I think that um, even when my mom was pregnant with me, she was singing. Um, my dad and my mom had a had a group together called Spirit Level. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna. There's an album that um that I'm gonna make called Spirit Level. That's um, fire, honestly. Yeah. Wow. No, I remember. I remember reading about that. Um, you mentioned that when you when you talked to Alphonse over at Pitchfork, which was a really great interview. And um, right. I can tell, I can tell that you come from a musical family because um, my father, my, uh, my father did doo-wop for a long time. He had a group, and he was also in a skating troupe called the Village Wizards. So like, he's always kind of been in that space. And you can always like, like it's it's usually pretty easy to tell when like someone grew up in a, in a musical household and like i like there's just something very musical about you as like i don't want to say a person but like it just 
there's just something about you that feels very like melodic if that makes sense i can't put it into words the way i want to i think i agree but i've realized lately i use my voice more like a drum you know mm -hmm. um yeah and like a lot of old, like some old heads but i'll be drumming you know <laughs> like rapping you know but like i right. certainly think that because that's that's my foundation is drumming you know yep um and particularly with drumming you know it's the way that i was taught was speaking you know like i wasn't like here's some sheet music check this out you know like when i first learned when i was my father was teaching me how to play congas um it's all oral that's how you know like the true african way you know yeah and then you connect that back to like you know the the role of like a griot or somebody who's telling a story you know um so I'm grateful that even, you know, it's 2021 and I'm making music that I feel like directly connects with 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 uh, with our ancestors in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. I'm very proud of that because. You know, I feel like a lot of people don't allow themselves to tap into their. To, you know, to the to the realm of their ancestors because of. Maybe they're not consciously speaking with them, you know, or acknowledging them. So they're kind of locked away. But I allow, like, I try to allow kind of spirit to come through me in that sense. Like, I try to just do do what feels natural to me and what feels um, honest and truthful. And I feel like that honors, you know, ancestors. And um, I think that... Uh, you know, like gratitude is the greatest prayer for me. So I think that when you do something, when you do something honestly and expressing your gratitude, yeah, that's that's like that gets heard, you know, by what's beyond our, you know, what's tangible. You know what I mean? Right. And like, I feel it because in high school, I started playing djembe. My uh, my high school had a um, had a West African drum club and uh, my teacher, Greg Taylor. Shout out to Mr. Taylor. I have no idea where he is, but he's the guy who taught me. He like, like he also taught me about just like the smack, the bass and the tone on the drum. And I played for about probably like five or six years, like seriously. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. you know, like he hearing a song like Deep Water Blue on Song of Sage, like it kind of, you know, like and you like talking about like acknowledging the ancestors like that, like that kind of song or like that song gives me that kind of feeling. Yeah, nah, I love it. Like, it, yeah, that's one I've been going back to a lot recently. I, I, I really, uh, um, I fuck with that shit a ton. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, you mentioned this earlier. You mentioned, um, you mentioned the whole, you know, like you starting the whole Navy Blue project and putting out music, and you did it anonymously through SoundCloud. And it's been, you know, um, it, it, like it, 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 it had been like a few years before the mint happened. And you decided to well, what what well, like I don't know if like the mint was the official like hey I'm navy blue, but it was definitely like a big moment at least. And like I imagine that you enjoyed ha having like that space to share your thoughts without like the weight of expectation of being like Sage El Cesar is navy blue, you know, like mm -hmm. just kind of having or or I don't I don't want to speak for you obviously. Like is 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 that kind of like. Am I am I am I on the right track with that or am I just kind of fucking talking out of my ass? No, nah, you on the right track. I think the the correct wording would be like navy blue is an extension of say Joe Cesar. You know what I right. mean? Right. And you were kind of and you were kind of going at it a little more, but like like you, you were talking about like how Tebe was kind of pushing you to kind of be like, hey, maybe you should embrace this. So like, you know, like ultimately it's your decision. So why did you decide? that it was time to embrace that navy blue side of you um i guess it's like really just um kind of facing it was the first step in like facing certain fears one of many steps actually i should say i would say that not like the first ones you know but um yeah i was afraid of like you know pretty much the reason that i had wanted navy blue to be anonymous is because i wanted i didn't want my like you know sage to change the way that people listen to the music 
Right. You know, I didn't want them to attach what they knew or thought they knew about me, you know, to the music. I just wanted the music to speak for itself. Um, and I was also the kid who, like, you know, was always like, oh, I know this music that you don't know and da, da, da. So I wanted I wanted Navy Blue to be that for somebody, somebody just stumble upon this page. It's got like a hundred and something followers and be like, what is this? Yeah. You know, um, something that I've been thinking about because I have I have so much music, bro, and a lot of old music. Um, in the future, maybe some years from now, I want to sell like a, a hard drive, maybe sell like 10 of them, some small amount for a lot of bread that's just got all of the music I've made. Mm. All of it, you know? All of on, it. But. On some mock shit. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, like, well, mock, I feel like is he's like, yo, like, this shit is special. You gonna, you gonna pay for this, you know? Like, right. those are, like, legit albums. I'm just saying I want to sell, like, the... Like what's it what's it called when you put the when you put the thing in the ground and then years pass and they Oh a time capsule? Like a yes, like a Yeah. As a as a time capsule, you know what I mean? That's so, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully no one takes that idea. Um I probably shouldn't even have said that. Uh it kind of spoils the surprise, so maybe we don't use that. <laughs> yeah. We yeah, we can scrap that too. Whatever, yeah, it's, whatever. It's, no, yeah. It don't matter. Um we're just talking once again. We're just yeah. we're just talking. I'll edit around it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it felt good to be able to be like you know, even still, people like still don't even really make the connection. Even given that, as discreet as as an album cover, not album cover, as the single cover being me and Tebe together, still didn't really click for people. Right. Um, but yeah, there's that. You know, I'm really looking forward to that and. Um, I just felt like, yeah, it was just time, you know what I mean? And it was just time to like yeah. own it and not really be so afraid of what people thought, especially the, the the content of it. And one thing that I'm the most proud of with my music is like the response that I get from people. Sometimes I get DMs from people that are like, not it's the it's the consistent theme of the praise that I get from people that's like, yo, thank you. You know what I mean? Like this really yeah. helped. This really helped me. And I remember when a couple years ago, King Cruel did a show at um, a Life. Yeah. And um, I remember I gave him this um, this t shirt, this fucking awesome shirt. It's a uh, Superman holding Richard Pryor. And um, I gave him the shirt, and I put uh, like a little note inside. Remember after I gave it to him, a couple of days passed. I was like, that was so embarrassing. I was just like, yo, bro, like your music really helps me out, you know? But I know that yeah. that's why we do it, you know? Even if he was like, man, this kid, like, was, you know, like, that's it's touching when people are like, yo, I've gotten shit like, yo, I was going to off myself, and your music kind of grounded me again, you know? Yeah. And, you know, Kai and I were also speaking of, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, he was just like, yo, I just want to tell you how amazing that show was. Um, cause he was like, yo, like we're speaking about how, like what Mike and I put into the universe is peaceful, you know, like what Kaz said, he was like, yo, like a gathering like that. He's like, I would expect like a bunch of stick up kids to be waiting around, like trying to, you know, do what they do seeing that many young people like in a gathering you know and right kids coming up to me and, and speaking to me he's like yo that's love like these kids showing you like showing you that kind of love that's priceless you know and he's like that's just a it's the reciprocation of like what you put out there they receive it and they give it back you know and um you know as much as the music helps me that's really why i do this is because i need it it's like really the place that I can put my thoughts. You know, I do therapy. I, you know, I, I believe in like that kind of outside help. Um, but writing, even when I'm just writing for me, 
is much different than when I'm writing raps. You know what I mean? Like, and like I said, uh, like my relationship with with uh, with writing is different. You know, like the, my first rapper I heard was Tupac. My mom was like, fuck with this, you know? Then I got uh, The Roses Grew From Concrete, his book of poems. The book, yeah, I have the book too. My dad got me that book. Yep. And um, that's his favorite rapper too. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's, a, there's a poem in there called In the Event of My Demise. And I was just like, wow, you know? Um, I remember in sixth grade or fifth grade, there was a writing contest in like California write to your favorite author dead or alive and i wrote to tupac and um i ended up like winning in 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 southern california or something like that or in california not winning and maybe like top three or something um i love i was just i loved that book but um i just saw that like you know the power of writing and like i said before and it's like a consistent theme in the interviews i've had recently is like the stream of conscience is being able to have a place where you can culminate your life in one thing. You can just speak about your childhood, speak about the present moment, speak about the future, you know, in like one thought, you know. But I absolutely admire and adore like rappers that can speak on something. There's songs where I speak, speak on a specific thing. You know, um, I'm actually working on an album. Well, it's done uh, with Wiki. Yeah, I heard about I heard about that. That's crazy. It's really good. I'm really proud of it. We got really amazing features on there, too. Um, but yeah, like he his pen is so nice. Like he has this joint on there where he, it's just like story time. It's incredible. Um, visually, you just get the whole picture, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's I forget what the name of the song is now, but it's it was called Drug Supplier. And um, mm. it's just incredible how you could tap into like. That's the beauty of rap music, you know. Yep. The visual that you get in your head, you know. And um, I had done something else for New Reader where I was talking. You just picked a book, you know, and like one of those first books for me that gave me a visual was The Giver and um, where you can is a, a visual that you get attached to the words, you know? And like, especially at a young age when you're reading, your imagination is just expansive, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's so many places that your that your that your head goes. And uh yeah, writing is an amazing tool and an amazing thing, you know. Um and something that's really been consistent, a consistent theme. Um with Song of Sage, I didn't erase any lyrics, you know? Um, I just wrote, you know? And whatever I wrote is what was there and what was, you know, I'm a firm believer in whatever is meant to be would be, so. Right. Even now when I write, I just try to write, leave it, you know? Try to work around it, even if there's moments where I'm like, "Mm." but this is the thing. Even if I record it, let's say there's a line I don't like, I just don't say it. Doesn't mean I erase the writing. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Nah. Or, or sometimes I just allow my, like on that joint, this the world that I fell into, that wasn't written. You know, that just came it just out. It happened. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's just, that's on Primo at the, the end. That's all freestyle um you needed you more than you needed me three apiece we all bleed like those those moments are priceless those are just like you know whatever comes out comes out you know right and i'm happy you brought that up already because i was going to ask about that too because like the thing like your discography has always been so striking to me because like the music gets tighter and the observations get sharper with every single project like i because like because like with writing Cause yeah, yeah, like you were just talking about writing. I think about it like uh, I think about it like archery, right? Cause the way the way it goes for me is like as an archer, you don't always hit the bullseye, 
like like there are some archers who can like hit the bullseye whenever they want but there are the others who will like hit it but like not quite make it to the exact point they want to and it's like you're just like shaving off like the amount of shit that you need to get to to get a little bit closer every time Mm -hmm. and like that's kind of how it feels listening to some of your music especially from these last three joints you put out like it feels like it feels to me like you're getting slightly closer to like the ideal navy blue project like this is like i'm almost there you know like i'm not quite there like i'm close but i'm not there yet you know and i was gonna ask um yeah like i like i was gonna ask you like do you feel as though you get closer and closer to that project every time or like do you just kind of take it all as it comes and just kind of like acknowledge each individual project as its own like this is a product of its time or like it's good because it is yeah i i think it's i certainly just take it as it comes you know i've my the ideal album that i have in my head i was going to do next um because i just signed a deal and i was like i might as well use these resources to make that one Mm. but i have so much music already there i'm like why not just go with the trajectory that it's already Let's just go the way that it's already going. You know, I'm really hyped because I got these projects that are all extensions of Song of Sage. So, you know, we have Song of Sage, Post Panic. Um, The sequel, so that one is Gift of Gabrielle, Rain's Rain. Mm. And after that one, I have um, Crypt of Carlos, Onward. And then the the last one that I'm just starting to like, I have like maybe two or three in there. Crypt of Carlos is done and Gift of Gabrielle is already done. Um, the last one is called Ark of Atreyu. Mm, so, so you already had the itinerary done for this whole Song of Sage series. Yeah, four Damn. joints because it's those are my my names, Sage, Gabrielle, Carlos, Atreyu, Alcesa. Wow, okay. Um. You know, Song of Sage comes from Song of Solomon, Tony Morrison book. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, but yeah, again, all of this kind of strategic, like this comes that comes from Ka. When I look at his discography, it's like you see the 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 growth in every project. So he's been like, that's why he's my biggest inspiration, you know. And he's somebody that really helped me understand like I make music with people that I love. And that I've built a relationship with, you know, right. and that's why it feels so special, you know, like right. there's that there's that extra layer of meaning. Right. And I've got type shit. I've got the the features of my of my dreams, which is Ka, Yasin, Tebe, yep. you know. And now I'm just like I still have like three more that I just that I consistently have to put it put out into the universes. Beanie Siegel um styles p and jay-z shout out to the ghost oh wow that's that's that that's a lineup (laughs) that's such a that's such a late 90s early 2000s kid lineup too that's that's like yeah i feel it i feel it that's so good yeah man and it's like it's amazing i I haven't met jay-z and i haven't met styles p but i met beans through um my manager and um it's like literally such an amazing guy. It was incredible to like spend time with him. He is just like, he's, he's, he's the man. I'll tell you yeah. a story. I was in the studio cause I went to see, I went to Al's studio and I, and Hop was there with Beans. And uh, Hop was like, yo, play him some joints. And like Hop had stepped out. So it was just me and Beans. And um, I played in this joint that me and Al had just done. And Al has this like monitor. Like if I'm at the desktop, there's a monitor up on like above by where the speakers are. And you can see there's a camera in the back of the room. And I could see the back of my head in the back of Bean's head. He's on the couch. So I'm like watching his reaction as I'm playing in this joint, you know, and I don't see him like moving, you know. He's just like, I could tell he was listening. So when the song ended, like I turned around and looked at him. He was like, yo, son. He's like, that shit is hard. He's like, yo, play that back. I was like, 
wow. And then he goes on to say, you should do an album where you just speaking. Where you're just like, <laughs> when you're just speaking, you know, like the way Nikki Giovanni did, Truth is on its way, or, mm -hmm. you know, Whitey on the moon, you know, like just speak. I, I don't, I know that I am, a, like all rappers are poets, but you know, I want to, I'll get there eventually, you know. And even still, I used to get uh, annoyed with the whole, with, with whatever. Oh, it sounds like spoken word. It sounds like lo fi or, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm rec right where I am right now talking to you on Zoom, the same spot on the couch right here. Bro, yeah. you want to see my recording setup? This is my recording setup. It's just like my, yeah, okay. Uh huh. It's my recording. I put this thing right here and I record right here on the couch. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it is lo fi. You know, I'm not in the studio. It is most literally underground sometimes because I'm recording in my basement. Right. You know, like, yes, it is spoken word. It's words that are spoken. You know what I mean? So, like, I try to not, like, get too fixed on that ah this that but when he said that i was like wow you know that that takes it's like oh like reminds me of gil scott hair and i'm like oh see yeah, that's my biggest that and i love that sometimes i look at the comments on youtube and people are like sage is our modern day gil scott hair and i'm like that's a stretch i don't think anybody really holds a flame to that man um, yeah, he's 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 one of one like that like he's he's like they call him the godfather of rap for a reason son like he's yeah bro you ever seen this joint look oh shit that's him right yeah that's cool damn Got him. that's hard you is that custom you know me man you know my body nah <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> you, because you, you just brought up beans. Um, I gotta ask because we're talking about movies and shit too. Are you a fan of State Prop, the movie? Yes, bro. Like? <laughs> a great actor, bro. Yeah. Great actor. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a wild movie. I watched it again recently, and like, yeah, that was that was that was a time. I, I like. I know they made sequels. And I don't think I saw the sequels, but like. The shootout at the end where he's just like in the courtroom and then he's just like, nah, like they just Come gave on. me third. They gave me 13 of life. I'm state property. Like, it's just such a like, that's just that's just it. <laughs> the beautiful thing about it is like, you know, like growing up listening to, to Beanie Siegel, I'm like, then you meet the person that it is. You're like, this dude is like the coolest guy. You know what I mean? we're humans you know what i mean like it was just like it was it was such a privilege and an honor to meet him and be like whoa this guy is has like this might sound soft but he's got like a very precious smile bro an infectious like an infectious smile hey man smiles yeah. are good like you know you don't gotta you don't gotta add any qualifiers to that shit but yeah nah i, I own it <laughs> but you, I told did he just say to bbc we got a precious smile but yeah, I don't know any other words to like ex express that. <laughs> Bro, he's just like funny, man. Like a funny dude. Funny dude. That's another thing that I'm working on, you know? Tebe always tells me, he's like, you need to figure out a way to show people that you're not this like stoic dude. He's like, you're a goofy ass nigga. Yeah. You know, like I spent a lot of time laughing you know and cracking jokes and uh, the other day i'm really proud i did this song where i'm not addressing like any trauma it's only like it's only i'm just drawing from my happiness which is amazing that's growth that's growth right there i was like whoa it felt crazy doing it i don't necessarily love the song but just the fact that it is what it is is amazing yeah, you know, that's like a timestamp of a moment where you like finally tapped into that thing that you want. So that's good. You know, like even if the song doesn't go anywhere. 
so you know like obviously we, we've been talking a lot about your raps and your intention and words but you also produce a bunch and you produced two full projects this year you produced uh as above so below with uncle john and you produced true sky with a kai and this is something i always ask rapper producers because i love I, i'm like really fascinated by rapper producers just in general so like for you personally, like, do you feel there's a difference between like producing for other people and producing for yourself? And uh, I guess the second question or the second part of that question would be the same thing, but for you rapping over your own beats versus rapping over other people's beats. Like, hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. I love produce. I, li I like working on a project with somebody because I get to think of their voice on the beat, you know? A lot of shit that I, you know, Uncle John, yeah, the, the two, I mean, like, they're kind of night and day, like Uncle John Project and Akai's. I wanted to get real, like, I want to just approach things differently with Akai's project. But, like, even my favorite joint off Uncle John's project, uh, like, Man on a Mission, mm. um, like, I don't see myself rapping on that. But I was thinking, oh, man, he's about to, he's about to kill this, you know? Um. But yeah, one thing I love about rapping on other people's beats is that a lot of the energy that I might put into making the beat gets invested into the words. Right. You know, so like sometimes 50% of the of the the energy that could have gone into the words go into the beat. But lately I've been rapping on very simple beats that I've been making, leaving room for me to really, you know hone in and do what I'm supposed to do. Um, yeah, I love producing for people. And I like, I just, I love producing in general because that's what I did before I rapped. Um, I definitely wrote a rap before I produced, but like I fell in love with production, you know? There's a lot of people who hear things differently. Like, you know, I was watching that uh, Tyler, the creator interview where he's saying like, it's all perspective. Like, I forget who it was with, like, uh not breakfast club um hot 97 hot 97 right the recent one right yeah yes and he's just saying how yeah it's all about perspective that certain people hear different things you know so if there's somebody who listens to a song and they're like wow those chords are beautiful somebody who's like the dr them drums are hard some people that are not listening to the music at all and they're just listening to the to the lyrics for me, like it's all of it at one. I think that the music lays the foundation for, you know, the overall theme. Like, I li really, it's just like it's kind of everything. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like 30, 30 keys is the prime example of that. You know, it's just like that beat does a lot. Yeah, and then, with so little, you know. Then Ka comes in and just meshes it right together. Um, it's complimentary, you know, so I like when I can. I've, I'm grateful to provide a, a canvas, you know, if I'm metaphorically or, or not metaphorically. Uh, Figuratively, um, not quite. What, what I'm saying is that. Yeah. Um, if I provide the canvas. For then somebody to paint on. I still play the. A role in that you know what i mean right there's no painting without the canvas you know um can't just paint onto nothing you know um so i love that i love that like kind of that reciprocation you know the energy that i put into making the beat the response is the person bearing their stuff their soul onto that beat right um, and then and then you can flip that around and do that for someone else on their beat, you know, like that's right. Exactly. Um, and I said it in that new reader interview that's coming out pretty soon. It's like somebody might send me a beat that I that I would not have been able to make, you know, and that sound might then trigger a thought or a memory that I wouldn't have been able to think of on my own. You know what I mean? Like. That's the beauty of it, you know. I mean, I'm like, wow, I just get engulfed with that thought. And that's then, you know, that's what uh 
that's what I try to do for other people, you know, is like create something that helps them think of something that they might have not been able to think about had that beat not been there. Um, another one that's like a very special thing for me is I had sent Mavi this beat that's just like very fast paced jazz loop. And I don't think he'll record to it, but you know, but he's like, yo, I've written like four or five joints to this, you know? He's like, yeah, I, like that's a beat that I write to, you know? And something similar happened, like Overcast had sent me a joint that he did. I was like, this is incredible, bro. And I was so moved. I was like, bro, can I get on this? And he was like, I think I'm gonna do this one solo. And I was like, bet, can you still send me this beat though? Cause it's bringing something out of me. Yeah, I just gotta hear it. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to write to it, you know, see what comes out. Um, yeah, so music is super important, you know. Um, but yeah, somebody had come up to me recently in regards to the uh, Akai Solo project, True Sky. And he was like, it was very, like, different production from you. And I was just like, that's just, like, what was the energy that I was feeding off of, like, you know, like, I was also going into it with some kind of like, we, also, we weren't really even thinking about doing an album. Every time he'd come over, we would just make joints, you know? Right. Yeah. He meant, he mentioned that to me because I had him on the podcast not too long ago and he mentioned mm -hmm. that that was kind of the vibe. Yeah. We were just sure. making joints. And then he was like, yo, should we do it? I was like, absolutely. Cause we already had so many, but right. like, bro, you know what I mean? I absolutely love what Akai does. And, um, I feel like I didn't really want to, how do I say this? Like Mad Space is one of my favorite joints, you know? Yeah. I was like, yo, there's no way that like I will kind of make, I could make any production that will hold the flame to what, what was done on that project, you know? You, you think so? I mean, I was going into it with that thought, like, man, there's just mm. like, Idris really did his thing on this. Like, oh my God. Right. Um, and then, you know, I guess there's still, there's some special joints on there, but I'm like surprised I even made. Um, and I guess I got that, I got that uh, inspiration because there'd be beats that I'd play for Akai. And he's like, yo, that's cool. I like that. It's the same shit. Like when you're putting together a pack for somebody, you put you like the the one that you don't think that they'll like they end up using always always you know that's always how it works um always happens there's a bunch of beats that something like really i mean even when i'm playing joints for tebe he's like what's that i'm like oh that shit is whatever he's like nah that's the, that's the one <laughs> you know i mean just speaking of that like still to this day i think i mean I think for eternity, like I'm gonna be in love with the with the with the bends. It's one of my favorite beats I ever made. Man, so it's just a it's a crazy one. Man, that little that little that little vocal sample in there threw me off the first time I heard it. But yeah. I really grew. I've grown to love that beat. That might be my favorite on some rap songs if I had to pick one. Either that or a, uh, um, maybe the mint. Honestly, mm -hmm. like those two are two of my favorites. So I love yeah. that project in its entirety. So I, I kind of have a hard time, like, you know, and it's funny, even people like people like, yo, I love Asukar. And I'm like, the funny thing about that beat is also amazing, by the way. That's my favorite one. I lied. Asukar is my favorite one. Sorry. <laughs> yo, you know, it's funny. Like, bro, I actually didn't make that beat. Oh. Yeah, Tebe made that beat, um, but I guess he gave me production credit because I had, because I work on an MPC, so I had all these chops. I was playing with it, and I had something similar to it. And he was like, "Yo, let me see," and just was messing with the kind of the simple, the simple loop that I had there, and just added mad chops to it, and just did something, took it to a, another place. So yeah, people are always like, "Yo." That main ingredient flip is crazy, da da da. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's really bro. I don't know, like, you know, I guess I don't know. 
<laughs> hey, you played some kind of part, but <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. It was my chops and everything, you know. He was pushing, pushing the pads, but yeah, he put it together, like. Right. Yeah. You know, like as you know, like as a good producer does, you know, like the producer is yeah. the person with the vision most mm -hmm. of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Right. Um, but yeah, I love I love making beats. Um, but I really I guess for the album that, that, that you were talking about, like the Navy Blue album, for me, that's going to be when I'm really focused on the music, you know leaning away from the samples and like right. really putting together some music, you know what I mean? Bringing my dad in, you know, bringing in composers and, and people that I admire, you know, I've already kind of spoken to a couple people about it. Um, just to, you know, put it into the universe. Totally. Wow. That's a, that's a big step though. Like moving on from the moving, moving on from like sample based stuff and like loops to, like doing the thing like mine i'm like mind design just did that with his album the 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 one that came out a little while ago which is really amazing i went to the show in la it was like i i can't even imagine <laughs> crazy mm. like the people that he had in the band it was just like insane that's fucking beautiful and like and you know like you've mentioned all these people throughout this whole conversation you know like between like we're talking about mind design right now. You got Mavi and Overcast and Mike and Wiki. Like, you know, like, like we've been talking about this whole idea of like the underground and like what that means now, which like I use it a lot, but I'm but like, it doesn't feel like it means much anymore. But like right. there's, but like there's definitely like a, one thing I love about whatever you want to call this, like, I guess, I guess the word I'd use is like movement, I guess. It still doesn't 100 yeah. percent fit but like it's a community like everything about it feels communal you know like between like right. what you and mike do and what you and tebe do and what you and mavi do and akai and uncle john and there's just like this huge network of people who are like right. who are like together but separate at this it, it's you know I'm, I'm not even going to try to put it into words but you know like i guess uh you know like considering all these people are in your orbit and like Kia too, who is somebody I've been thinking about a ton lately, like shout out to Kia. Kia. Like Kia is different. She She's the one bro. Like for forever, your girl has been in here for the last year and change. Like what about so, the joint she did for Mike though? Oh man. Yo, they, they go so well together. Like Kia and Mike Kia's together. Usually one of my favorite producers, bro. Mm. Yeah, she she's she's really different, really different. I saw her like, at uh, Cafe Urzuli recently, and like the performance was so fire. See, the way I, that the way that people there were interacting with the music was like amazing. See, that's the thing. I haven't seen her live yet. I interviewed her last year, but I haven't mm -hmm. seen her live, and I'm gonna make that happen. Like at some point, because she's playing two shows in New York. I'm gonna be at one of them. <laughs> like I don't know which one, but I'm gonna be at one of them. She has like, this drop on her SP. Where it's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. That's fire. The way, that, yes. the way that the crowd like roared when she was like, "My kitty could never quiver for no white meat." Yeah. It's like, ah! it was so hard. <laughs> so she's a performer. I love her. Shout out to her. But like, so like, like, so like in this, so I guess, uh, let me let me calm down. How would you? how would you describe the musical community that you're involved with? Cause like, I feel like, I feel like there's been like in general, I feel like there's kind of been like a loss for words or like people just kind of fall back on like old kind of not antiquated, but just kind of like not necessarily like the most useful terms. So like, how would you describe what y'all have going on right now? Um, I think it's really special. And I think we were kind of returning back to like, the, the initial idea where we're talking about conscious rap, but it's more so just like conscious music, you know, very aware of what we're putting into the universe, you know? Um, and it, the thing I love the most about it is that it feels like, like I draw inspiration from people that I know, you know, I'm a genuine fan of like people that are friends of mine, you know? Yeah. I think that's like the best part of it is that I know these people personally. 
So I might listen to music, their music differently than somebody else would, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, oh, no, I'm sorry. Finish your thought. Oh, what I was going to say is that like, again, returning to this, this idea that I was saying of, of like judgment, like I'm able to now even look at artwork in a museum that I might not like but simply respect the fact that somebody made it, that somebody took time to make it, you know? So there's that on top of the fact that I genuinely like the music, which is just almost inexplicable. I'm like, wow, this is just kind of a, another kind of experience, you know? Um, but yeah, what, what we have is really special. And I like that it's not a collective, but it, it's just like-minded people, you know? Right. Each of us individually, it's like a family tree, you know, like there's people that will say this sounds like this or you know what I mean? Like, I think like, you know, you said you hear the similarities and the inspiration of uh, between me and Ka. You know, everybody has their own like, oh, this sounds like this or that, you know what I mean? Even though it's all kind of one sphere, you know? Right. That's that's why I like the word community more than anything else, because like I feel like that's I feel like 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 I feel like that's not as like oppressive or like as uh, um, restrictive as yeah. something like. Yeah, I don't know. It just works for me. So like I just. Yeah, like it's just it's great to like minded people for sure. Right. Definitely. And the last thing is like, you know, like you're like kind of extending on that idea is like you specifically like you've kind of you've kind of worked your way into this position where you have this like multi-generational appeal because like you got people who are younger than us who are fucking with the shit like especially looking at the show that you and mike just did like there's a lot of like young kids there you know like late teens early 20s type shit and then you've got you've got Ka, you have you've got this relationship with al you've got this relationship with preservation and like I, like like I know people in their like late 40s, early 50s who I play your music for and they're like, who's this? You know, like just like to, just, just to see, you know, like between what you what you did with skateboarding and what you're currently doing with music, like mm. and, and and your modeling with Supreme, like you just kind of have this, you're in a really unique position where you're speaking to a bunch of people across a very wide age gap, mm. which not a lot of people have, you know? And um, I'm and like, I'm really big on that, like bridging of the of the gap. So I guess like my last formal question for you would be like, how does it feel for you to be in a position where you're kind of introducing new twists on something that might be perceived to be an older sound or just kind of like doing what you do and having it appeal to such a wide swath of people? Right. Um, I honestly have to give some a lot of credit to like, you know, Tebe and, you know, Rock Marcy and Griselda because they're making, they're making, you know, a lot of that sound, you know, like a lot of people are big fans of it, you know, and they're, and yep. they're, they're kind of bringing it back, you know. My dog is annoying the shit out of me right now. She's doing the absolute most. You can't see her, but she's... <laughs> Turning her bed around because she's not getting any attention. Damn. Barking. Um, but you know, I love I, I love that the, it's a big age age group of people that that enjoy the music, you know. And I think it's a it's a testament to you know like again I know I've said it many times, but what I'm putting out there, you know, it's not for a specific kind of person. Well, you know what? Let me let me reel that back in. The music is for black people you know right but there are people non-black people that identify with the music and that's ultimately the goal you know so you know another crazy one is like a friend of mine ran into cool keith on the street <laughs> yeah and was like oh like i'm a big fan da 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 they were talking and he, and he asked him like oh so like what have you been listening to and cool keith was like man this kid named navy blue and i'm like that's like so out of left field for me. It makes sense, but at the same time, I'm like, whoa. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Like that's, you know, like it's it, it makes sense, but it's like 
to hear Keith say that, like, uh, <laughs> you know, um, especially especially considering how many oh, like she wants so much attention from me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, get out, here, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Like, considering <laughs> considering how many forms he's taken on, and like how many, how, how much, just like the, the different shit that he's done. It's like to hear him be like, "Yo, like I listen to Navy Blue." Like, wow, right. crazy, crazy. Um, but yeah, I hope that kind of answers that question. It's like I'm just really, man. It's 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 an honor just simply because people enjoy the music. That's just just keeping it super simple, like. Whomever it is, you know. Um, Akai was laughing at me at the at the uh, Arm and Hammer show because of um, the way that I interact with like certain white fans, you know. <laughs> um, it's like you know I appreciate it. You know, it's just fun. It's just funny. Like white people are just operate on like a weird timing. It's weird. They do, especially in the rap sphere, bro. Like it's 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 either they're trying yeah, too hard like, or they're not yeah, trying hard just, enough. <laughs> like I love it's just so easy to be like, yo, bro, I fuck with you. Like, and black people are generally the ones to do that. Like, I see you, bro. Keep doing your thing. Big love. And then part ways. And then it's like, you know, it's not no like awkward like interaction and trying to make up for the fact that you know, you know, all that shit. But um yeah, I hope that kind of sums it up because, yeah, I'm just super proud of what I'm doing. Um, but not, you know, not like the, not that kind of pride, you know, I'm like genuinely proud of what I'm putting yeah. out. And I look, and I, again, I just look for, I'm always, if I'm not working on something, I feel like I'm not doing what I'm meant to be doing. Like, I'm consistently working and reworking on stuff, you know, and projects. I work that way, like in complete thought, you know. Right. So much music that I'm excited to share with with the world. Like it's only been, you know, I put out Higher Self in December it's 2019. So like I'm still very new, you know. Yeah. To an extent, you know, like you've been here, but like you're still like you've you've kind of like did the grand opening like red carpet i'm here type yeah yeah i get what you mean uh -huh. so i'm like man i'm excited i'm just excited for the future and you know like i said i signed a deal so hopefully that does something you know and i didn't i ultimately wasn't really interested in doing anything like that but i think it's again like i said about facing fears it's like yeah there's a there's a certain discomfort that comes with that but it keeps things interesting, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I like that. I like being able to be like, okay, you know what? Let's step into this same way I had to step into Navy Blue after this is the next facet of this experience of, you know, right. music. You know, I've, it's a good experience to have. And I'm grateful that even, you know, a, a label, a big, a big label at that would be interested in even taking a chance on me. That's you know, fire. But I think that I bring something different. I'm not quite like the the artists that they find that they, you know, as human beings, we love potential, you know? Yep. We fall in love with potential. Um, I see the potential, but I, I have a strong sense of self and I know that like, regardless of however this experience goes, I'll be at, you know? So. And yeah, like I can tell you mean that in the sense of like, like you were saying, like real pride, not even in like the in like that crushing, like capitalist way of like, I need to be working or else I'm not being productive. You know, like you're saying that in the sense that like, this is what I want to do. And I feel like I need to do this in order to feel like good, right. you know, and that comes through. And make it, making money off the music, making money off the music is just a tiny plus, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, oh. I just want to, I just want people to, you know, music is sound, you know, sound is, is incredibly healing. So yeah. I just hope that my music can do that for somebody, you know, the same way that, you know, 
all of the artists and uh, musicians that have like changed my life forever. And I hope that I could do that for somebody else, you know? Oh, and I think you have, and I think you're going to continue to do that. So like, yeah. <laughs> um, Sage, this was, we went through hell kind of doing this a little bit, <laughs> but um, yo, thank you so much. This was, this was really enlightening and just like fun and uh honestly it's a bucket list thing for me because i've been a fan for a minute so oh, like yeah it's, for real like thank you yeah man it's an absolute pleasure i'm glad that i got to do this because you know it's good to talk about these things and get comfortable and and uh familiar with it right yeah and i'm honored that you chose here to you know do that a little bit with because like you know like, yeah because like i know you're you're busy and you're very selective about what you do and you know like even just on some like humble shit i just appreciate you even being like yeah let's do it you know like i don't take that shit for granted like that really means the world so like from right the bottom bro, of my heart. like i said this is because you wrote an incredible article you know so i was like you know it's been it's been great i'm really happy hopefully we don't bore the listener with this one with hearing hearing us fucking be ridiculous for three hours i mean <laughs> yeah i have no idea how long this is going to turn out to be but it's going to be fun either way like i think people 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 are going to be hype about this one i could tell and yeah just like just like thanks for your thanks for your like honest honesty and just like just thanks for being a goofball because like people <laughs> like that shit i like that shit i'm a goofball like and it's good to yes, it's sir. good to, it's good to goofball and shit so <laughs> Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far. And shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.